The war drama Women at War on Netflix recounts the lives of four women from very diverse backgrounds. As the First World War picks up steam and the situation in their small French town of St. Paulin becomes increasingly hazardous, their lives take a dramatic change. Over the course of eight episodes, the plot changes dramatically as various secrets are revealed and the women are thrust into circumstances from which they seem unable to escape. We worry what will become of them all because the finale puts the community and them both in a very precarious position. What the ending means is as follows. Spoilers ahead. Suzanne is a nurse on the run from a police officer whose wife was killed during an abortion that went wrong. She arrives in St. Paulin with the intent of fleeing to Switzerland, but when she arrives at the convent that has been changed into a military hospital, she realizes just how much she is needed. As the number of wounded soldiers increases, the pressure on the doctor, Joseph Duvernet, increases. Even though staying in France is dangerous, Suzanne decides to stay in St. Paul and help the doctor. Marguerite, who had given her son away when he was quite little, arrives in St. Paul and in the meantime to locate him. Her employment at a nearby brothel allows her access to the military. When she meets Carolyn, an old friend, she has a surprise in store for her. She is currently married to Victor, who recently enlisted in the military. She is now in charge of the factory in his absence. She proves to be quite adept at her work, but when her brother-in-law Charles shows up, everything becomes incredibly difficult for her. Does St. Paul and fall to the Germans? In 1914, just one month into the First World War, Women at War takes place. Due to its strategic location on the route to Paris, St. Paul and becomes significance for both France and Germany. It is crucial for France that the town stays under French control because if it does, the Germans will find it very simple to launch an attack on Paris. The Germans want to invade it as soon as possible for the same reason. Things get worse for the citizens of St. Paul and as the conflict rages on. The sheer number of soldiers and the injured rises as Joseph and Suzanne are put under extreme pressure to provide for them, with hardly any qualified medical personnel to assist them in their work. The battle sequences in the show get more intense with each new episode. Initially, there were more scenes of troops at the brothel, but over time, there were more battle scenes, to the point that the final episode was fully focused on the town that was about to be besieged by massive German forces. The situation becomes so bad that the town is evacuated in preparation for the arrival of the German army. Only those who are absolutely necessary remain, such as all of the nuns and ambulance drivers. The majority of the soldiers are either injured or killed, so the French force's final attempt to prevent the town from being attacked fails tragically. This was primarily because there weren't nearly as many soldiers stationed there as there were with the German forces, who also had gas supplies, which made their jobs much simpler. All of this points towards the fact that things are not going to get better anytime soon for the town, especially considering that the war is only going to worse from here, extending for four more years. However, more help is on the way. More French forces are expected to arrive after at least a day or two, at which point the soldiers will have to make do with what they have to fend off the Germans. Everyone who is still in the town is preparing for what is to come, as the hospital staff gets ready to manage injured soldiers more effectively. By the end of the series, St. Paulin is not merely being approached by the war. There is still hope for those who are willing to go to all lengths to rescue their town and their country, even though it is prepared to burst down the door. Does Marguerite die? Marguerite is one of the primary figures in Women at War. She travels to St. Paul in the hopes of finding Colin, the son she gave birth to while she was still a teenager and totally unprepared to be a parent. She finally meets her son after much deliberation on the subject, and they get along well up until Colin learns their family connection. He thinks it would be better if they completely forgot about one another and never ran into each other again. Marguerite nevertheless marches onto the battlefield to ensure her son's survival despite this. Marguerite is glad to see her son, who is shocked to see her there. She tries to reach him, but then, is hit by a bullet. As she and Colin hold hands, she passes out. At the same time, other women reach there. They get both Colin and Marguerite out of there, and while we see Colin wide awake, the question lingers on Marguerite's fate. It looks like she has died because the smile on her face on being reunited with her son and seeing him alive looks a lot like acceptance of death. Still, there is no time to confirm that she is dead. Her friends are more focused on getting her out of there, which might mean that Marguerite fell unconscious and can still be saved. We wish for her to have a happier conclusion, even if there is a good likelihood that she will pass away. She only wished to see her son once more. All the risks she takes during the series are for him, even the one that brought her all the way to St. Paulin.